Okay. Hey folks, how are you? I just wanted to make a quick video for you guys to address a question that has come up fairly commonly about the use of this handpiece EndoSync uh, Plus along in combination with the EndoSync AI Apex Locator. As you know, the two con connect and you can use the EndoSync AI for measuring your working length separately with a hand file or connect the EndoSync AI like this, connect the two of them through this cord, uh, connect them and be able to measure your working length simultaneously as you move along. That has generated a lot of questions and uh, there is, by the way, a bunch of different settings that I uh, have kind of recommended that are in, that could be put into the handpiece. Actually, these are the ways I asked the manufacturer, put them into the handpiece for you guys, but you can custom make them and change them to, their, uh, to your own liking uh, as you wish. But here, more importantly, I want to talk to you about the fact that some people are asking, well, you know, I'm not getting quite very uh, erratic readings and I can't use it the whole time that I'm instrumenting. So I wanted to make a quick little demo as to how you should expect to be using this and uh, also talk to you about some of the limitations because we need to be frank here into what is it that you can do, what is it you cannot do with this handpiece. All right, with that, let's quickly do a little demo here for you guys. I'm going to just show you um, this here. And so this is the EndoSync uh, Plus handpiece along with the, um, um, you know, you can turn it on like that, with the EndoSync AI Apex Locator. And this is, uh, it uses basically Morita's RootsDX uh, technology and algorithms for measuring length. Therefore, it is super accurate and it is the gold standard of uh, Apex location in endodontics at the present time. But let me quickly just show you. So for example, the way it works, and I'm gonna use this little model there is that you can use, you put a little fluid in here, okay? And you know, every time you're measuring the working length, you wanna have just about a wet apical half of the tooth of the canal that you're working with should be wet. The rest of it should ideally be dry as to not cause any kind of short circuits uh, with the fluid getting out of there. So we're gonna connect, put this in here so that we can read, have the lip clip. This would be normally going onto the patient's uh, lip, obviously. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a file. Let me put my endo ring on as well. And I'm gonna, just going to use a size 15 hand file here, okay? And basically put that in. And then as we get close to our estimated length, we connect our apex locator to it. And you can see this is what we have. And then we work it down close to the apex until you're here to get some reading. And then you get where you want to be. You might usually prefer to be at a half a mil. I always want to kind of just go a little bit past to confirm, you know, that I have patency and then back up to the half a millimeter mark here like that. And now, as you can see, we are a little bit kind of off. Let me quickly show you this angle so you can see here. So we then at this point, we have to adjust. So we're about a millimeter or so away let me put this off and then adjust the length this is what you're you would be doing clinically to adjust your stopper to the length that you want to be at okay so that's the length we want to be at and then we measure that and we always want to straighten out the file too when we're doing this because you don't want to measure from a curved file and what we have is 15 millimeters, approximately. So that's the length of this canal. So this is the way we would be measuring it with a hand file. But what's nice with this uh, system is that now you can take your uh, this cord that connects the handpiece um, to the handpiece here, that is the apex located to the handpiece, all right? And I'm gonna use this file, the ESRCM scout file, which is a very nice file for getting down canals. And we're gonna do the same thing. Now the lip clip is on the patient's lip, right? Again, just make sure that you only have fluid in the coronal half, I mean, in the apical half of the canal, and that you don't have any fluid in the chamber and outside. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate it. It is auto start and stop is on. So my finger, look at this, my finger is off of the power button. The moment I put it in there, it starts and it stops when I come out. 
So we'll put this down and you can see here as we get close to it, this is getting close. And then we reach exactly that same 15 millimeter length that I just set up on this. It is going without my finger on it, automatically going in there and stopping and confirming if I push a little bit that it's going a little past. So right there, this is the way it works, okay? Now, the key that you have to understand here is the fact that in order to do your measurement, you want to have the root canal half wet, the apical half wet, but the chamber has to be desiccated dry. Blow dry air in there to completely desiccate it. Have just a little bit of fluid in the apical third to half of the root. And there, because don't forget, if you fill the canal with the fluid, the moment you put the file in there by just the Archimedes principle, right? The, the water is going to lift and come out and that can create short circuits. So what I like to do is I have a phase of instrumentation at the, which is the working length me measurement, where I measure the working length and then I capture the analog length here. And then I would be turning the apical action off here, or you could even disconnect the handpiece and just do your instrumentation traditionally. And you may say, well, Ali, why is it that I can't just instrument the whole way then with the apex locator connected to the handpiece and just take out my stoppers and throw them away and forget about all of this analog stuff, right? Well, there is a big and important reason. And the reason for that is that in order to do proper instrumentation, what you need to do is you need to have fluid that is filled to the brim of the chamber. So if you're working with a, um, you know, with a um, uh, tooth, for example, let's take a look at this right over here, for example, on this tooth. When you want to do your instrumentation on a tooth like this, you want to make sure that you have fluid that's coming all the way up to here. And the reason for that is because if you only have the ideal working length measurement amount of fluid, which is only the apical half, would totally dry up here. As you cut, the debris is going to turn into mud and block your apical area. So you want to make sure that you have your you have your tooth filled with uh, with fluid and your irrigation solution all the way up to the brim, so the debris that you cut is constantly being. Um, colloidally suspended without having it precipitate at the apex that causes all kinds of problems. So all of a sudden, as you can imagine, you realize what the problem here is. What we have done is we've created a dichotomy. We have a situation that is best for working length man ma management, which is the apical half of the canal should only have fluid. The rest should be totally dry. That gives you very accurate reading. And then you have an optimal state for instrumentation in which you have fluid filled all the way to the brim. So if you try to operate the apex locator while the tooth is filled up to the brim with the solution, you're going to cause a lot of short circuits and you get these erratic readings on the apex locator that is going to drive you crazy, okay? So what you want to do is you have to be cognizant of this and therefore understand the limitation of this or any other handpiece that uses an apex locator connected to it. These, these uh, handpieces, even though we call the apex locator AI, it is still just the basic circuit. It follows the rules of principles of electricity. And if you have fluid that is kind of spilling out of the tooth, which is the proper way of you instrumenting fully filled, then you're going to get short circuits with the PDL through restorations and other uh, methods of conduction and it's not going to work and that becomes very frustrating. So my workaround to that has been to divide the use of these hand pieces into a phase of working length measurement by which you just dry the canal, you do your initial crown down technique, you get to the coronal, uh, to the apical half or third of the root, you know based on your working length estimates as to what the apex working length should be within a millimeter or so uh, from wh where it is. At that point, then you connect the handpiece, you measure your working length, and then you disconnect it. And then you use your analog readings. In order to get that full-time apex locator reading from the handpiece, um, you are going to require environments that are not optimal or best for your instrumentation. So just keep that in mind because, you know, even though the Apex Locator handpiece combination is incredibly 
helpful because you first of all don't have to use hand files and you can just use the same rotary file it's much more easier to get down to the apex such as this ESR CM scout or the endo sequence uh, scouts or even the ESX scout those are all optimal files for working length measurement and you can do that very quickly and then measure the length and move on with your instrumentation let me just tell you a little something is that if if we felt that look you know, I was I bought this thing because I hoped that it was going to mean that I never have to make a working length measurement again, that I could throw out my stoppers and uh, just rely on using the apex locator uh, on the handpiece, start and stop, and all I have to do is to hold the handpiece. Let me just tell you that, there is a caveat to that. It may make our job a lot easier, but not only it is not possible at the present time based on the available technology, but imagine if things were going to be all that simple pretty soon we would all be replaced with robots right because the handpiece would know how to do that uh, the root canal all you have to do is just put it into the hole and it'll do the whole thing for you so in a sense this limitation may be a blessing because it'll keep us all employed a little bit longer uh, by not having robots replace us but also it emphasizes the importance of us being cognizant of the requirement of each phase of treatment for instrumentation, we need to have overflowing fluids and irrigation to keep our debris suspended to make sure we don't get clogged. To get accurate working length measurements, we have to have completely dry fields, only fluid in the apical half of the root. So with that challenge, I leave it up to you to understand how you want to make the most of this technology, the way I do it, is instrument crown down. When I get to the apical three millimeter of the root, I connect a handpiece, I measure my working length very quickly that way, and then I capture the analog length so that I remember traditionally what those numbers are, which we are going to need anyway for our charts from a medical legal point of view as to what the length of those canals were. Uh, that's just medical legal uh, reasoning that we're going to need for that and then do my instrumentation complete to the sizes that I want and I no longer need to have the apex locator and then if you want at the very end before instrumentation before obturation you can repeat the same process of reconfirming the length uh, with a little bit of a larger kind of a file maybe like a size 20 if you want or something like that um, or a 1504 or 1506 and then complete the case. So anyway, this I wanted to demonstrate to you because it seems to me that so many of the questions that come up about this combination that are based on some type of a wishful thinking about what this piece of technology can do for you, that it can't, but yet it can do a lot of great work for you because of the fact that it is, uh, uh, it expedites the process for you along with all of the other fu functions that are in there. At the end, I'm just gonna leave you with this little clinical video, which I've shared before, but it may be of some value to you again to show how this thing is used clinically. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Once you've done your coronal instrumentation in a crown down direction or phase one, you flood the chamber with some hypochlorite and then you proceed to remove the hypochlorite from the chamber, leaving hypochlorite in the canal. You then air dry any remaining uh, fluids, so just to prevent a short circuit, that's the key thing. And the settings for this phase, which is phase two, is 300 RPM at 0.6 newton centimeter with the apical stop. So if you have the handpiece on auto start and auto stop, as soon as you go inside the tooth, the handpiece senses that you're in the tooth and it proceeds to do its rotation, 300 RPM. And uh, even going down, don't forget it using either SSC or the rhythm motion, make sure your uh, file is being cleaned. And here you can see we reached the apex and the file came to a full stop. The assistant can uh, adjust the stop, but what I've found is sometimes they're looking at the tooth from a different vantage point and you end up having the stopper at the wrong kind of reference point. Make sure that it's always at your line of sight like this, so it's a consistent stop and a stopper to reference point relationship. That's very important. I do is I confirm it by going up and down a couple of times to make sure that it's always stopping at the same point, which indicates that it's a true and accurate working length. At this point, I then measure this analog reading using my ruler, and here we have a 25 millimeter working length. 
Oh, File that you use is usually the expediter or a couple of scout files. Then don't forget that you need to confirm this with a radiograph because we get additional information from a radiograph that you don't get from an Apex locator. You could use your hand file to do this or you could use the same file that you used uh, for measuring the working length on the end of sync. Just leave it in place and take a radiograph. This information that you get from a radiograph has to do with the apical shape and diameter which is really as critical almost as the length itself. And uh, then you disconnect the handpiece, and then you proceed to phase three, which is to complete the instrumentation uh, with the ESX technique.